Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit, that from her workings all his visage waned, tears in his eyes, wait, wait. a broken voice, and his whole function suiting with forms to his own conceit, and all for nothing, for Hecuba. Oh, uh, what's Hecuba to him, or he to Hecuba, that he should weep for her? What would he do, had he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? He would drown the stage with tears. Upon whose most dear life and property a damned defeat was made. Am I a coward? <laughs> he told me to have a monologue, I'm just saying, so, so I had a monologue. Yeah, it was from Shakespeare. Hamlet? Got anything? You know, I actually, um wrote about Hamlet for my English literature thing, and I had that entire monologue already memorized from theater, right? And so I was determined that I could, like, use Hamlet and, like, all the quotes from it, except that I was kind of nervous, because, you know, it was an AP test, like, just, like, college level, right? And you only get to take it once. It's a very important test. And so I wrote the entire thing about Macbeth, but it was actually about Hamlet, only I called Hamlet Macbeth. Oh, uh, but now I don't know what to say, you know? It's like artist block. Uh... You're just too good to be true Can't take my eyes off of you You'd be like heaven to touch I wanna hold you so much At long last love has arrived And I thank God I'm alive I love you, baby, and if it's quite alright, I need you, baby, to warm the lonely night. I need you, baby. Who's back? Dude, I talked the entire time. It was great. You good now? Yeah, I'm, I am super good, bro. Awesome. Here's your mic. <laughs> what I miss? I talked to a smack about you, basically. Oh, it's messed up. Oh. Uh, Mainly about you wearing glasses. Yeah. I don't need these. <laughs> I don't need these. Where are you? No, what now? Huh? Where'd you go? You look like someone else. I want to put these on. I was like, I do need these. Uh, <laughs> we were watching your panel, actually, and we found out quite a bit about you. You are very tall, and you're very young. Yes, um, I'm 18 years old now. I was 13 when I did my uh, first role, of, well, my first big role, my breakout role, ooh, of Alphonse <laughs> Elric. And um, 18 now, and I'm six foot four. Yes. Dude, you're like the Justin Bieber of voice actors. I'm sorry, I just had to put that. He's got, he's got the hair. He's got the he's got the look, and he's got the talent. What? Justin Bieber. Yes. Yes. I, I'm sorry. I just I haven't listened to him, so maybe. maybe you know what? That makes two of us. What is this um, Rizm Rizmbool Rangers? Oh, that's that's a that's a Vix fan club actually, and we've all got um, basically FMA was a really big show, so the whole cast of it has our own fan club, and the fan club usually has something in the name that has to do with our character. Um, so there's the mini skirt army for Travis, and then there's the Risenbull Rangers for Vic, and then I've got um, the armor army, which is kind of self-explanatory. Although this one time in England, um, it was the one con that I've done in England, I thought that I was going to an armor army dinner, and it turned out it was just this one girl and her uh, close family, and she was in love with me. It was it was pretty bad. <laughs> I was like. I, I thought this was a group thing. <laughs> Awkward experience, wasn't it? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> so, you finished school. High school. You're totally ready for college. I'm totally not ready for college. I, I actually freaked out about getting older for the first time when I was like 13. I was like, Aaron, your childhood is more than halfway behind you. And so I've 
I've always wished that I could stay young, whereas most kids are, are like, yearning for the next year or the next summer or the next whatever break. I'm just like, I've always just tried to stay in the moment of my childhood because I was terrified of it ending, and now it's like, here we are. And I'm gradually accepting it. I'm, I'm working towards the point, but... If it's any consolation, you've accomplished a lot more than any average 13-year-old would could, could ever dream of doing. So, with that, I congratulate you, man. How do you feel? Well, thank you. I'm... You know, it was luck, essentially, so I feel grateful that, that I had the experience of becoming a voice actor more than anything, like, because I didn't, I didn't go out and audition for it, I didn't, like, push myself, really, I just happened to have my uh, cousin, Jerry, uh, sorry, Justin Cook, was in the business, he was directing a show called Fruits Basket, man, I haven't told this, like, story in such a long time, I haven't done a con in a while. All right, so my cousin Justin Cook was directing Fruits Basket, and he got into it through his friend Evan Jones, um, and he just needed a kid's part. He needed a kid to voice uh, young Akita, which is like a two-line thing, and uh, he didn't want to use a, a girl, which is what they normally do. They, they bring in women, adult female voice actresses, for the roles of little kids. And Naturally, I mean, yeah. So he knew a real kid, which would be me. And so he just brought me in, and then it turned out that I had some sort of natural aptitude for it because I'd been reading for a while. Like, second grade was spent reading, like, Lord of the Rings. So... Oh, that's legit, man. Yeah. Was, that's, that's some real books right there. I was a pretty good reader, and, and that was it. Like, that's all I had. I didn't have any acting experience or desire, even. I just thought it was going to be really cool. Like, I, it wasn't something that I started out thinking, man, I'll try to do this. It was like, hey, you want to do this? Yeah. And so, awesome. so I was really lucky, and I was lucky to already have an aptitude for it, and I was lucky to get in at that age, and that's how I managed to get enough accumulating roles to get out at 13. You're, you're enjoying theater, and uh, are you thinking of going to college? You, you're not, sure maybe. You major in anything. I think I will probably do not do psychology. I will hit you. <laughs> I was going to do psychology until I took psychology this year, like AP Psych. And I hated my teacher so much, first of all. I really hope she never sees this. Anyways, <laughs> she was... Oh, uh, dude, trust me, I, I'm pretty sure she... If, if she's anything what I think of a psychology teacher, she would not watch YouTube. <laughs> she's, uh... Um, basically, she's just, like... Like, thought that the... She was fresh from college. Not not from, from, like, graduating from college, but from teaching in college. Oh! Which leads me to believe that she was fired from college, from a college professor job. Oh! I don't think she switched. She was like, oh, I prefer to teach high schoolers. Who would yeah. enjoy a pay decrease? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. But. <laughs> and so, uh, I didn't like her, and then she decided that because an AP class was a college class, even though I'm taking five, that she should have, we should have way more work than any other class ever. And so that became my most difficult class ever. And psychology is supposed to be, in my mind, a blow-off class. It's supposed to be for learning interesting things about my, how my parents messed me up, you know? Yes. Exactly. It's not supposed to be studying parts of the brain and having to have them all down and being able to label them, you know? Yeah. And that's what she made it into. So I was like, grr, and then I got a B. And I'm an A student for the most part, unless it's math. And so it was, it was upsetting. I hate math too. Yes. <laughs> so bad. It's, it's bad, but at the same time, it's, you need it. You no. need to pass. That's, you that's have the, to take it. That's the thing. That's the only reason you need it is to pass. You don't need it in your life. Nobody needs it in their life, except for engineers. And so I think you should have to go to a special school to even have math offered to you. That's what I think. <laughs> You're not alone. I'll tell you that. So are you, are you an avid magic player? Are you open magic player? You know, um, I'm, I've completely come out of the closet. That is magic. Um, that's actually another thing I got into because of high school theater, actually. It oh, was really? basically, well, our theater class was a blow-off class, and so during the actual period... <laughs> when is it not? Whenever <laughs> we're not, you know, because we basically were like, okay, we have our lines down, it's okay, we're, you know, and so we just started playing card games. Like, I mean, we played poker some, and then, like, 
um, a last generation student at the our, our high school high school high school vagabond players. That's what we go by. Guys, gotta get rid of those Pokemon cards. You gotta check this game out. It's called Magic. Yeah. No, it's it's the Yu-Gi-Oh players that we really killed. Like some of those some kids had like invested a lot of money in Yu-Gi-Oh and then they just had to quit Yu-Gi-Oh because nobody wanted to play it anymore. Lost. What? What? Ted's <laughs> excellent adventure right now. <laughs> oh, by the way, how'd you enjoy uh, PariahCon? This is a very important question. PariahCon was awesome. Everyone watching this should come to PariahCon again. Next. Uh, we'll leave it at that. So, okay, uh, cool. Aaron, I'm gonna let you get back to your cat nap. I appreciate it. If that's what you were doing. That is what I was doing, but I think now I have to go eat and stuff. Oh, that would be good, yes.